and welcome back to another video in the Stingray Giveaway Gladiator Build Series. And today we're going to be talking about the suspension that we put underneath our Giveaway Gladiator. So now if you've been watching this build, you know that we've taken this Gladiator a long ways from stock. Not only have we added the larger wheels and tires, we've added front and rear LOD bumpers, we've added those sliders, we've added the roof rack, the bed cargo system, and that rooftop tent. Now all those accessories are going to cause some penalties. First off, we needed to get more clearance in the suspension or lift so that we could fit these larger wheels and tires. Then we also needed a better spring and shock combination so that we could support the extra weight. So we chose to go with the Rock Crawlers 3 inch Adventure Series Pro Lift Kit along with a set of 5100 Bill Stein shocks and the matching steering stabilizer. So let's rewind the clock to the install and show you how it's done. Now for the kit itself, we're gonna be installing the Rock Crawler Adventure Pro Series 3 inch lift kit. And that includes everything you see here, including eight heavy duty control arms that feature the Adventure Series service free joints. Now the Pro Kit upgrades the front sway bar links to quick disconnect sway bar links, and it converts that factory five link rear suspension to a triangulated four link, and we get rid of that rear track bar and that does bring us a big performance benefit. More on that later. Now you've seen us do this before and that's take baseline measurements before we start a suspension lift. We're gonna measure from the bottom edge of the wheel straight up to the fender. This is gonna give us 31 and 7 eighths of an inch. And we're gonna show both stock and then measure again for our after. Because the track bar works in a different plane than the four links going forward, it's going to fight or limit the amount of articulation that this suspension could have. By going to a triangulated four link, our upper two arms are now gonna be angled and mount to the center of the axle. And we get rid of the track bar that is limiting that suspension. So we don't need that anymore. Now the heart of the triangulated four link conversion is this rock crawler cradle that comes in the kit and it drops right down over the center of the axle. You have two U-bolts that go up around the axle tubes and then there's four more bolts that go into the four factory threaded bosses on the top of the factory axle. Now before we can install the cradle, we need to drill and tap these threaded bosses out to a larger size. And Rock Crawler makes it easy on you in that they include the proper size drill bit and tap in the lift kit. Mm -hmm. 
So as you saw, we tightened down the top bolts first and then followed up with the side U-bolts and tightened them down. Now, it's ready to go back in the vehicle. However, Rockcrawler and Dana both recommend that if you're running a 37-inch tire or larger, or if you're gonna do some hardcore off-roading, that you wanna weld this bracket in. So we took the paint off the axle tube and off the bracket, and we're gonna get a weld bead in there. Now, one of the things we like to highlight in all our lift kit videos is the difference between the aftermarket arms and their bushings and the factory units. The bushings are just using a vulcanized rubber compound and it's vulcanized both to the outer shell and to this inner sleeve. And then once you torque everything down, there's not a lot of movement in that bushing. And so the suspension, as you're trying to articulate it off-road, it's actually fighting these bushings. And if we look even what the side-to-side -side movement is, there isn't a whole lot there, maybe five, 10 degrees. So as you can see, the factory arms and their bushings can be a limiting factor in your suspension. Now let's bolt in one of those rock crawler arms and see what the difference is. Bolting in the rock crawler adventure series arms, you can see that it easily moves up and down. They're using a pressure molded vulcanized rubber around a center sleeve that then has a second sleeve that is machined perfectly to fit and provides a full range of motion. It also allows quite a bit of side to side flex. And did I mention that these are service free? No greasing needed. On the Adventure Pro Series suspension, we only have the two rear upper control arms that are adjustable. And we wanna make sure they're the same length. Well, it's really easy to slide a bolt in through at the axle end to get those two holes to line up perfectly. With the front joints being at an angle, you can't just line them up perfectly. So what we want to do is we want to grab a tape measure and take a measurement. And we want to measure to the center of the joint. So I'm going to grab a paint marker right here and just throw a dot right in at about where the center of the joint is. And it's going to be 24 and 5 eighths. Next to go in is our spring seats, and we need to show you that there's a difference between the left and right spring seat. As you can see, one's quite a bit thicker, and they're actually numbered on the bottom. This one here says number one. This one says number two. Number one's gonna go on the driver's side. Number two, the taller one's gonna go on the passenger side. Another thing you wanna look at is on the top, you'll see an F for front and an R for the rear. So when you put this in the vehicle, the angle is gonna be tipped towards the front. And this will help keep the spring in the proper position when the vehicle's at ride height. Now for shocks, we're gonna go with the Bilstein 5100 series. And they're probably the best price to performance or bang for your buck shock out there. They feature a 46 millimeter monotube design and have Bilstein's patented digressive valving, which reacts to change in road conditions. So whether you're on-road, off-road, whether you're loaded or unloaded, these shocks just work. They also have a zinc coating to protect against elements and they're available in multiple different lengths and sizes, so you can pair them up with just about any lift kit that we offer here at Northridge 4x4. and now the rear bump stop extensions. There's two holes in the factory plate. We set the extension on top. Now we can drop in just a couple bolts and a lot of people will bolt it in there just using the two bolts. Now the rock crawler bracket does have two more holes in there 
And Rock Crawler does recommend that you drill out the other two bolts and install all four. Now we go to install the axle side of the lower control arm and we're going to find that the control arm and this top of the bracket, the link bracket here on the front axle, they're going to hit. So we need to do some trimming up in here. Last suspension video we showed you a grinder with a cutoff wheel. Today we have another trick for you. So look at our measurements after a couple hundred miles. Looks like we got just around three inches across the board. Now that ought to be enough information to get you started on your very own install of a Rock Crawler Adventure Series Pro Lift Kit. Now for our Gladiator, we installed the suspension a couple months ago. So we've had the chance to get it out and get some miles on it, both on road and off. And it's performed very well in every situation that we've thrown at it. So if you want to try the Rock Crawler Adventure Series Pro Lift Kit and those Bilstein 5100 shocks on your Gladiator, we'll hit those links down in the description box below. You'll also find links for the entire Rock Crawler line, the Bilstein line, including that steering stabilizer, 
You'll also find a link to where you can enter to win the Stingray Gladiator. And then drop a little further down and do the usual. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already, and then hit up that comment section. What do you think about the rock crawler suspension with those Bilstein shocks? Thanks for watching today. We'll see you again soon.